Okay, Bravo take note, can start unlocking hero image. Skateboarding for me started as a hobby. Yeah. To reach professional standard, uh, I need to join a lot of competitions. 2009 to 2011, that's when I started to get recognized in overseas. So from 2011 till 2014, I managed to get skateboarding sponsorship from local and overseas. Usually for skateboarding, we must have uh, the right soul. Uh. Much more flat than this then uh, it's not slippery. For exercise, I don't think it's uh, helpful. <laughs> Outside, you can smell like, you know, the bus fill, the grass, the trees, cigarette smell, yeah, perfumes. Prison uni can smell like walls. Uh, the last competition I had uh, before COVID, roughly around 2018 or 2019. And then COVID started to happen, so there was no competition at all. I was in a relationship. Back then, I have a girlfriend. Uh, I argue with my girlfriend. I didn't mean to hurt her. It's just my mistake that I grabbed her. March 2020, that way I started my sentence. It's a one-man cell, and you're all alone in the cell. That loneliness, uh, when you can't express yourself, when you need to talk to someone, you're stuck. And I feel I'm, I'm a bad person. Uh. I think I make a lot of mistakes. Uh. I have to accept uh, this is my punishment. Uh. B1 is a maximum security institution, and it also houses inmates with uh, very long sentences, inmates uh, who are receiving violent intervention programs. I'm bad. Yep. We do not want any unnecessary conflicts, so that's also one of the reasons why we, we house them in single man cell. Our prisons have to be Spartan, but not a front to human dignity. It is as you can see, bare, it is uh, simple. But at the same time, prison's conditions has to facilitate rehabilitation. Kangran 507, 507. Yeah, so this is basically where I'm staying. Uh. This is my home. Uh. Uh, usually, this is uh, my area of sleeping. Usually, I don't wear clothes on uh, because inside this cell, it's very hot. Uh. Usually, like 4 a.m., uh, 5 a.m., I wake up already. So we have nothing to do because it's very dark. Ma. So we try to go back to sleep. Once the light on, then I will go to our washroom over here. La. Once we, uh, we bathe, I brush teeth, then I will come back to this area again to read my Bible. After reading, I will walk around this cell from here to here, or sideways from left to the right.
And when I'm boring, I actually did count. Like, by my feet, is about seven. Uh, the width is five. Like. From 7 to 7.15, we have started with a mindfulness practice. So we, there is a music we'll play. Attention to all HU2 inmates, stand by for the morning master check. I repeat, stand by for the morning master check. You are required to stand up with your t-shirt tucked in and greet the officer. Okay, master. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Master check is a process where we account for the inmates' head count in our prisons. So let's say, for example, if I have uh, 150 inmates in my housing unit, I must make sure I have 150 headcounts uh, accounted for. Morning, sir. Good morning. Not just seeing them, I also need to make sure that they are responding, get his acknowledgement as well. Morning, sir. Good morning. To make sure that he's not feeling uh, unwell or anything. OK, uh, bravo. Day room one master, total present, 4-1. So once master check, about like 20 minutes, then uh, our full latch will open. Yeah, usually this uh, is very important to us uh, because it's our first view of the day uh, from a uh, long lockout uh, from yesterday night. Before the breakfast, the shaver will be issued and they will shave inside the cell. After 10 minutes, we'll collect back the shaver. Around 7.45, so our attendants will issue a breakfast to them. <laughs> so our breakfast usually consists of uh, four pieces of bread. So they will pass it through our full latch. Good morning, bro. Good morning, uh. Then we will take our mug. So put it here. Once we give them our television tea or coffee, then we will bring yeah. in. Yeah. After this, this door will close. I'll finish my breakfast, everything. I will walk again. This is the central kitchen, giving uh, meals for the entire cluster B. Per day, we have over two meals, lunch and dinner, approximately about seven to 8,000 meals prepared for prison officers, volunteers and inmates. In this kitchen, the meals are prepared by inmate kitchen workers. Staff you, don't mind, can close door 10, close door 10, open door 11. Okay, here is uh, preparing the vegetables for tomorrow's lunch and tomorrow's dinner. People might wonder if it's safe for inmates to use this type of tools in this workshop. Uh. But as you can see, the tools here, they are chained. When they come to the kitchen, right, we'll monitor their attitude and their performance. And we'll see who is suitable for which location. So like say, veggie cutting area requires a lot of cutting and grinding. So we need inmates here with the correct composure and correct mind. 
to perform this tau task okay what's okay they prepare the tray okay uh, okay, now you can arrange. There will be chefs from the Singapore Airport Terminal Services, in short, sets, who will be here to educate and guide the inmates on how to prepare the meals. The kitchen caters for six to eight different diets approved based on the dietitian recommendation. We have normal, non meat, soft diet, which means minced diet, off chili for people who can't take spicy food. Low purine for people who can't take things like tofu and low sugar for inmates who have diabetes. The kitchens will ensure that the daily protein and vegetable nutrition requirement is catered for for the inmates. Every day they have different types of food. Let's say for Monday, they have baked chicken. For Tuesday, they will have fish. Food production is done on an industrial scale. The inmates are the ones preparing the meals, ensuring that the inmates, right, they get the proper amount of food. The food, after it's being packed, is placed in these food trolleys. These food trolleys will ensure the food is kept warm until it reaches the inmates. So Wednesday afternoon, usually we eat uh, mi or bihun. So today is mi goreng. Uh. Uh, this one is like totally, uh, if give point uh, 0 to 10, I will say maybe it's maybe it's 0. <laughs> because it's very cold, then sometimes the mi also hardened already. When I was uh, doing those uh, illegal stuff, uh, was money was well to do. I do bring my kids uh, because they love uh, restaurants, the Western food. Mostly every day I eat restaurants, uh, so compared to the food now, uh, well, it's like totally one heaven and one hell. Uh. Usually after eating, I still feel hungry. Portion to me is not enough. Uh, for lunch, usually we don't have uh, meat. Dinner time, we have two breast chicken uh, or fish. Over the years, uh, I really start to adapt the food. But eventually, I still miss the food outside. La. The way we being served or what is like uh, being treated as pet uh, in the cage. La. For me, it's definitely uh, hard. La. Today, I left with 50 days to go. I've collected all these items so that I can reward myself every single night for my countdown. B1 is uh, one of the maximum security prisons. We hold about 500 plus inmates. Okay, uh, Bravo can grab me a day room one slider. The cells that we have here in B1 is special in a way that it's all single man cell. In other places, you have three man cell, a four man cell, and eight man cells. Over here, you see the image cell door. All right, it consists of uh, three key items over here, which is the viewing panel and we have two apertures, one on top and one below. There's this portion where, which is perforated, so from here, we can hear and talk to the image inside. It is not encouraged to talk through the aperture because, um, you know, we do not know what they have up their sleeve. They can throw things or they can grab all your items nearby the aperture. All right, so the poster you see over here is uh, basically the uh, cell layout which the inmates have to follow. Uh, they are given a set of items inside the cell. 
So when it's time for master check, they have to arrange the items according to the poster which is uh, given over here. The image will be given a clear pail, a soap box, uh, a mug with a cover. All right. uh, it's uh, transparent so that staff can see what, what they are hiding inside. They are given a plastic spoon right, for them to use when they eat their meal. And we have uh, a set of uh, toothbrush and toothpaste. The toothpaste is made in a way that it's clear and you can see things inside. If they were to hide anything inside, yeah, uh, it would be visible for staff to see. And if you see the toothbrush over here, it is made in a way that it's uh, very short because if they were to use this as a weapon, uh, I would say pretty much it won't cause much damage compared to a longer toothbrush. Each inmate will also get two blankets, big enough to cover the whole body. Last but not least, we have the straw mat uh, for them to lay out and sleep on the hard ground. If they want it to be more cushioned, then they will just fold the blanket in a way and make it like a mattress. This is the toilet area where the inmate go to the toilet and also take a shower. So the CCTV will capture everything inside uh, the cell, including the toilet area as well. So if they go to the toilet to know to do their business or they will, if they were to take a shower, uh, we can see everything. At night, the CCTVs that is inside the cell are equipped in a way that they, have, they can see in the dark. This is a one-man cell setting. It can be psychologically small in a way if you are cooked up here for a very long time. For the weekend, uh, it's really a uh, very big impact. Very, very big impact. For 48 hours, uh, knowingly knowing that your perimeter is only this much, it, it really uh, disturbs. Uh, the mind and the body as well. My wax, my moisturizer, my my lip balm, my lotion. These are all the things that I don't have here. Before I came here, I was a fitness trainer. I was living a high life, a luxurious life. People wanting to get a car, to get a bike, to get a house, to get uh, every single thing. I managed to get it all done uh, before even I hit 30. Uh, for this time, my sentence, I, I was caught uh, trespassing to Istana. During that time, I was in a high in drugs. I just tend to follow my thoughts, and I like to uh, go to places that uh, eventually are uh, interesting or unique. When when I was being caught, I have a drug utensil with me. Uh, that is when I was uh, led to the uh, drug consumption. I was sentenced to three years imprisonment um, for drug consumption and four months uh, for drug utensil possession. The blankets is the most, uh, for me, important one because the blanket can change to become pillow. Then we have plastic spoon, usually I think you guys use only once. All right, then throw. We just, this thing is like one year plus with me. One year plus, yeah, this one, uh, tasteless made from China. Yeah, totally this one, I don't know why they give us. I think maybe budgeting or what, but it doesn't give any effect. Yeah, totally, seriously. So, because I, I'm a worker, so I, this thing uh, is uh, the not the normal soap. So this one uh, is quite good, better than the normal soap. The normal soap one is too dry, way too dry. 
Centered soap is one of those things that motivate inmates to uh, maintain their conduct and behaviour in prisons so that they can actually go for uh, work soon. So once you go to work, then uh, we actually give an allowance, then you'll be able to purchase uh, canteen items like uh, soap. I got these goodies from the allowance that I had working as a field facilitator. Today I left with 50 days to go until my release date on the 21st January. I have collected all these items so that I can reward myself every single night for my countdown. By having some rewards and achieving these rewards by myself, I'm able to eventually make myself think better during my darkest time here. Basically, I worry, I forget, I need to focus on the risk of me getting into trouble, fighting. Uh, arguing and uh, disobeying uh, officers can be extension of three days to seven days for my release date. Tonight, I'm going to treat myself with biscuit. This biscuit. He is a very good inmate, but doesn't mean all the good inmates are good citizens. Uh, we have a lot of experience where the inmate obey, but after two months, they come back. They fail to become a good citizen. He's a very good uh, inmate, but what we are focusing now is we want him to become a good citizen. So that's our next challenge that we need to prepare him before he release. Stand by for cell search. Every time when I hear my turn for South uh, I feel very sick, you know. You're not allowed to do all this inside, huh? Yes, sir. Ben to Charlie, message over. OK, I'll sell it to Mr. Ben. Send your message over. Ben to Charlie, prepare for day room one cell search. I'll okay, sell it to Mr. Ben. Roger, proceeding. Okay, we're going to conduct a routine cell search from 507 to 511. Okay, uh, Wong King, stand by for cell search. This is part of the prison's regulations that we need to do the cell search to make sure that they don't uh, keep any contrabands. Contrabands can include excessive items or any items which are modified, such as a cell hook, uh, strings. Okay, Bravo can grant 507 cell search. We want to make sure that the environment is actually safe for the inmates and the officers to work in. So every day we have a scheduled uh, okay, cells to search. Okay, take out your Toigo box. Sit outside. Every time when I hear my turn for South Church, uh, I feel very sick, you know. Yeah, Boon King, before I go in, you got anything to declare? No, sir. The officer will come with their shoe on. So this is uh, basically where I live, uh, where this is my home. So uh, after the cell shirt, I have to actually re-clean the whole cell. Uh. So normally, you may would like to keep things in any part of the door fixture. Uh. Usually the holes over here, right, they will use um, stapler, bullets, or you can even put straws to use as hooks to hang things. And usually they will have a long piece of string and then they will just put round and round and round and round just to conceal it. Uh. So this string they will use to do some threading to their eyebrows or to their 
artificial hair. If caught with contraband in the cell, a report will be submitted against them and they may actually lose opportunity in terms of the work program or even uh, uh, have their out-of-cell activity, uh, their yard activity uh, forfeited. When it comes to the toilet area, this is where it gets more exciting. Like over, over here, you see an improvised hook, which is not allowed. Each cells, they are allowed to have uh, three cell hooks. Okay, two at the living area and one at the toilet. So this is an extra one. I will certainly ask the image to remove this and pass it to me. And I will give them a warning. We have a standard set of items for inmates. If inmates are allowed to have their own items, then it actually makes our officer's job more difficult to, to, to check. And then secondly, it's also more on uh, enforcing equality among the inmates. We need to make sure that everyone is the same, treated the same. The reason why I knock is uh, to see whether there's anything that falls uh, in or out. So these are the buttons for the flush and the shower. Uh, usually we just press the flush button first to see whether they are hiding anything at the toilet area. They normally will hide things right under the pipe over here. Uh, so we will just use the flush button to flush it all down in case uh, they will know what they will be hiding. So in my experience, when we do cell search, uh, we check the toilet bowl because sometimes uh, we can find inmates uh, hide things inside there. Things like um, medication pills, tablets, even improvised items that uh, they wish to hide. OK, Boon King can come in with your Toyogo box. Chances are they are, they are smuggling among each other, passing around without the staff knowing. Um, they could get from any place that you can imagine. Uh, but this is all not within the radar of the staff. That is why it's very important for us to do cell searches uh, every day, regularly. This one is an origami. It looks nice, la, but you're not allowed to do all this la, inside. Huh? Yes, sir. For origamis and other artwork that inmates like to create, right? they are not part of the standardised items. And it's also part of inmates' discipline la, inside prison. So that's why it's not allowed. Let's say if an uh, inmate were to keep a long piece of string that turned into a rope, uh, you can use it to you know, hang himself. If there are things that are sharpened, uh, that could also you know, be a risk uh, to us uh, when we work over here. Uh, luckily for the inmate earlier, uh, there were no major contrabands uh, that were found. Uh. It's just uh, rubbish and a few uh, improvised items that doesn't implicate uh, security inside our housing unit. She suddenly actually caught me uh, with some straws and actually the additional hook. Uh. It's actually an uh, improvised like, hook. Uh. Yeah. So basically, inside we use uh, rice to make uh, glue to actually roll out the paper. So after it dry, it becomes hard. Make sure you got five. Uh. For the straws, it's actually for counselling costs. We have this uh, every really if we have good performance, they will actually give us uh, packet drinks. Uh. So uh, the straw is actually where it comes from. So I just feel that the uh, hook for a toilet is like not enough lah, because uh, usually I hang towel to dry out. Then uh, when I actually go in for bath, I also have to take out my pants. So usually I will find something to hook on. Lah. That's why I do the additional hook. After all this being confiscated, I think I have to re-adapt again to yeah, use another method lah, in the right way. Lah. Okay, so far, uh, all the uh, things that I find here are all rubbish and all the things that you're not supposed to keep. Fish, straws, improvised cell hooks, all these uh, I'll give you warning. Uh. Okay, if you ever do this again, uh, the punishment will be higher. Uh. Okay? Okay, Bunkin, okay, we're going to thump you for the offence that you did uh, inside your cell for having extra cell hooks and uh, all the straws that you kept. 
housing unit informal resolution system. It's a platform where we record down the inmates' wrongdoings. What it does is it takes an acknowledgement from inmate who have committed some mistake and it gives them like a contract not to do the same mistake within six months. If not, then they will be uh, liable for a uh, higher, higher punishment, which is uh, a disciplinary charge. Okay, come sign away. Okay, so uh, in prisons, we have minor and major charges. So for minor charges, it's in range from quarrelling with uh, uh, another inmate, uh, disobeying uh, officer's instructions, or keeping excessive or modified items. For inmates found guilty of uh, minor charges, the punishment may range from a written warning, uh, confinement in punishment cell up to seven days, or his uh, release date will be extended. For major charges, caning may be imposed, and for serious cases, it may also be referred to the police. Major charge it can range from uh, fighting with other inmates, hoarding of medication, and even uh, tattooing in prison. Hey, sausage, eh? Bravo, can you grant me 509, 509? I think the hardest part in prison is the control. Maybe if you are outside, you can be in control. But right now I'm inside here, I cannot do anything. Yesterday. Yesterday one. You got three. Which one is the oldest one? The one. Ah. Right? So, oh, ah. Some of them do store quite a few to eat later in the night when they're hungry and all that. But they should only have two. We can't, cannot have them to keep it for too long because it could have uh, stomach pain, could, could get them sick. So we have to remove this one because it's been a few days already. This one is just his own personal, own drawings. So I'm also taking this one because it's an uh, unauthorized material. There's no chalk, there's no official uh, stamp on it. So I'll take it away. Why? Because uh, it could lead to him writing messages across the housing unit or even across the institution. Okay. Plastic, um, stapler, strings, and A4 paper, all this we can't have in the cell. Pencil, we are definitely not allowed to have like, because that one we can use it for tattoo. Although all these things in prison is not allowed, like, but we have our means to get it. Like. One of the possible ways how inmates got their contrabands uh, could be through the housing unit attendants who may put in the contrabands or additional items while they're doing food insurance. Actually, everyone knows that this is against the rules. Bored, but in the room, boredom, then we nothing to do, then I just do the tattoo. It's, uh, we were sitting in front of the CCTV, but the back facing the CCTV, like reading a book to like camouflage. Some magazine will be thicker. We use stapler bullet like those you can find can find on some magazine. You have to be round and have to be thick. So it's not like normal normal those uh, paper stapler. Then we will sharpen it through the on the floor. We just make it even up. One round, turn, sharpen. Close thread. Yeah, I need a string because um, the string is to like we, we tie it to the the pendant stapler. Two 
foreigner we try to get uh, from the doctor. We ask for um, like diarrhea medication, they will give us this charcoal. We dip it to the ink, uh, the, the, the thread will absorb the ink. They do not have the proper facilities to do those tattoos. So they improvise. And I've seen infections, their whole hand being swollen. That's one of the reasons why we, we want to curb it. The other aspect is inmate subculture. Uh, a lot of our inmates are affiliated to gangs. So usually, some of the tattoos that they want to put are gang symbols. And that can be problematic. And that can affect the good order and discipline of the institutions. Back then, I was a secret society member, so we do this tattoo to show a bit of loyalty, then uh, to like let people know that we are from this gang. Hey. It didn't really hide it properly, then the officer saw it is a uh, like fresh wound, uh. so they they called me. My date of release uh, I've extended for twenty one days and four stroke of kin. Four stroke, I think, nothing. On three different occasions, I was carrying three different types of weapons. Actually, the first weapon I got was a samurai sword. Yeah, I planned to go down to this place to meet this guy. After that, um, I just want to like slash him, then I walk off uh, to actually teach him a lesson not to mess with other people's wife. Uh. The second weapon I carried was a parang that was on my back. I needed it because um, at the time I was paranoid. Uh, like people, enemies were following me. Uh, and then my last weapon I carried was a bread knife. Uh, it's actually a protection for myself again. I didn't get to use it, uh, but after that I got caught. Uh. When you get cane, there's no installment. In total, I have 21 strokes of the cane. When you get cane, you, cannot, you can't scream. You can't faint also. And you can't appear weak. We are in secret society, so um, we have to be tougher. If you all this, you can't go, can't take. And in future, other trouble, how are you going to face it? What I'm setting up over here right now is for basic wound care for the patient after caning. Contrary to what people normally think, there are linear, uh, superficial wounds, abrasions. Um, it won't be profusely bleeding. I would consider it a minor wound because there's no uh, deep tissue uh, cut. They try to walk straight after the caning process. Some do cry, some don't. Uh, some are harder than others. So if they do request painkillers, we will prescribe for them. So far, I've not seen any inmate requesting. Uh, yeah, prison is tough for me, la, but as long as my family is out there waiting for me, uh, what I go through is nothing. Uh. I look forward uh, for yard time. It's because yard, uh, basically, we actually uh, do exercise and the space is much more bigger, then we can uh, feel more uh, air that is coming in uh, from there. exercise routine. So it's our own so-called HIIT, yeah, high intensive training. Usually one week we have two hours of yard, then twice a week. So it's four on Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, here's the yard time quite quite long, two hours. Yeah, we will make full use.
When officers are supervising the yard, it can be very daunting. You're taking care of a large number of inmates in one uh, confined space. Uh. The officers are um, tactically trained. They will expect the unexpected. Guys, you all cannot use the bench for exercise, huh? If they are trying to do the bench press, then that will deprive someone from using the table to read their newspaper or play games. And besides, the bench is also not uh, intended for that purpose. So next time, I don't want to see this. Okay? That's how we are showing the not correct way of exercising. But we only can do like jogging, sit up, push up, uh, HIIT, but we can't use any equipment in the yard. Uh, let's say the, the wall, the bench, everything we cannot use. Uh, and we cannot cross the red line around the yard. So basically we just do exercise smartly. Lah. So when there is officer, we try to just wayang a bit. Lah. We really do something that not allowed that let me us come here. So most of us will still do. Uh. Because there's nothing more we can do, Sully. Okay, um, this is my portfolio. When I was at the Visual Arts Hub, uh, we can draw. Visual Arts Hub is a place that we inmates can do like our fine art, pottery, carpentry, batik. Yeah, we can do anything to express ourselves also. This is the picture of me and my wife. Uh. I use a pencil, knitted eraser. Photos is very precious here. Every month we have 20 points. Uh, we'll be, if we not get charged or anything, we'll get 20 points. So you have to accumulate 60 points 60 point for one photo. 60 points, it takes about three months to, to accumulate. Yeah, so you have to maintain your conduct. Uh. Three months, yes, to get just 60 points, then you can claim for your, redeem for your photo. I and my wife were married in 2008, uh, so uh, after that, uh, after one year, I need to come into prison uh, because of some cases that I've done. So, um, during that time, my wife was pregnant. She's still waiting for me. Uh, she never leave me. My wife didn't miss any visit. Uh, only twice because she needed to give birth and bring my eldest daughter for checkup. Uh. I use money to, yeah, to show my love. To my wife, whatever she want, like those uh, branded bags or these, uh, we were, I just, okay, you know, let's go, we go and get it. She provide their living, their, the house, grocery made, everything. Like, I can feel like some of my wife don't have to work. And slowly, slowly, I start to uh, fall back to drugs. You know, slowly, yeah, everything gone. Come give me your pants. I feel it's a bit like actually quite humiliating. Uh, because on and off, I have to strip for people who like those prostitutes. Uh, uh, we are no different. Uh. If I was found guilty in the court of law, I'd be hanged by the neck. Uh. I was petrified. Uh. I didn't think I was going to die. I even make my own will. Uh. She wants to divorce with me. Uh. I feel it's very unfair. Uh. Okay, Bravo, take note, can start unlocking zero unit.
Okay. I think the hardest part in prison is the control. Maybe if you are outside, you can be in control. But I'm not inside here. I cannot do anything. This is the picture of me and my wife. I used a pencil, knitted eraser. My wife didn't miss any visit. Only twice because she needed to give birth and bring my eldest daughter for checkup. The meals are prepared by inmate kitchen workers. Once you go to work, then we actually give an allowance. One of those things that motivate inmates to uh, maintain their conduct and behaviour. Okay. Chances are they are smuggling among each other, passing around without the staff knowing. They could get from any place that you can imagine, lah, but this is not within the radar of the staff. You're not allowed to do all this lah, inside. Lah. Yes, sir. Okay, Ashraf, can grant 507. 507. When the inmates step out of the cell to attend program or go for recreation yard, we do the search. Okay, come, I search you first. They will take out their clothing, so uh, we will actually do an inspection to make sure there's no orderly harm. Okay, come give me your pants. I feel it's a bit like, actually quite humiliating uh, because on and off I have to strip for people. When I do the search, I also compare myself to like those prostitutes. Uh. Uh, we are no different. Uh. We have no choice. Uh. The officer will actually just do a quick uh, rub down. Okay, come. You can wear back. Yeah. To make sure that they do not try to hide anything in the clothing. Can I have your coil? And also to check whether the inmates has any uh, injury. So it's really more for the, the safety okay, of okay. the inmates and also officers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just follow through, uh. Sorry, don't know. Okay, come, can proceed. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you? Good to see you. Hey, how's everybody? Very good. Very good, good. No good. My sentence is three years, six months. So I already served two years already. So I will be releasing on next year, July. Uh, let's start with the breathing first. My only support is my girlfriend now. La. She is the only one who will visit me. Imagine yourself sitting on the grass. The class that I run uh, currently is uh, on family violence intervention. In front of you is a river, a small river. Generally, we will start off with a mindfulness uh, based activity. Basically, is an activity that allows them to work on if they have issues with uh, rumination, like thinking too much about the past or worrying about the future. Just don't notice how does the river look like? While doing my fullness, a lot of things like uh, the past, the remorseful, the guilt, then uh, will come to my mind. What did you hear? Because we come in here, then uh, there is a separation of time with our family. Uh. Like for me, I left my daughter uh, alone outside for two years. So there is this guilt that uh, why I cannot be a good father. Lah. That supporting her outside, yeah, helping her, guiding her. Did you put the thinking, the thoughts on, on the list and let it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I feel more relaxed, oh, like, like blank like that. Like I unload my burden. Oh. Why I think this course is because one of my charges 
uh, this time uh, actually involved family violence. Uh. My ex-wife divorced with me, so there is actually uh, bad terms. Uh. She is trying to stop me from seeing my daughter. Enraged, I will bang the door, I will shout at her like that, ask to see my daughter. So after that, probably she is like, uh, worried and scared um, that I might uh, do something wrongly. It actually kind of like helped me to reflect a lot of things, rights and the wrongs. So maybe uh, let me reflect that the, the way I treat my ex-wife, probably there is uh, a lot of like uh, wrong step lah, or miscommunication or things that doesn't do good. Lah. Yeah. So probably uh, the change is start with me, lah, I guess. Yeah. All right, guys, with this, we end this section. We'll see you again next week, okay? Right. All right, take care, please. So usually our newspaper is two weeks old. Uh, it's not the current one. So I was flipping through, then uh, I happened to saw this familiar face. Ah. When I saw, I was very stunned. Ah. So I cannot believe it's my mom. Ah. So I flipped the paper away, uh, trying to tell myself it's something I saw wrongly. Lah. Because July, I just contact her. Then uh, when I saw this paper, it's on October. So I tell myself, cannot be things happen so instant. Lah. But after that, I turned back lah, because I really want to not confirm. So after that, I just saw my name over here. Then uh, I know it's my mama. So she passed away uh, last year uh, on October 14. Lah. At that point of time, uh, immediately uh, I actually went to uh, one corner. Lah. So uh, I cannot control, so I, I cried. Lah. So uh, I just let out. Lah. Her last word to me is she will come and visit me. Lah. I think my biggest regret is. I never really tell her I love her a lot. I wish I can be a good son to her. Lah. I really love her a lot. Yeah, I really love her a lot. Yeah. And I cannot turn back the time anymore. Then for now, I only can tell myself for her, I want to change and let her have a peace. Uh. I don't want to uh, fail her anymore. Uh. Two weeks once. Some portions of the salary will go for their savings, and some portions of the salary they can use to buy their snacks. Five to six dollars for a week, that's their salary. This bag is about a week worth of salary. Okay, so you can open up. Uh, you check first. Take what you want, because I cannot let you keep everything inside the cell, okay? You take half, another half, you put back inside the plastic bag, we will keep in the office. We don't want them to keep a lot of items in the cell and make it like a mini supermarket in the cell, because that will, uh, again, will cultivate smuggling behavior. Oh. Okay, uh? so this one I keep, huh? 
So I repeat that. Uh, sandwich biscuit. Sandwich biscuit two, ah? Uh? Yes. Muruku one, ah? Uh? Muruku one. But so one, ah? Uh? Two sandwich biscuit, one oatmeal cracker, yes. okay? Okay, so I will keep this with me, ah? Uh. Okay. Not all the inmates are worker. So these items are very uh, valuable. They can uh, give this packet to another inmates in order to get something else from them. Even medications, where they can uh, also treat uh, through uh, this. So we are very strict and we are very observe on, on all those things. Lah. My wife, she wrote me a letter. She did mention that she wanted to divorce with me. Yeah. My daughter always curious. She wanted to know more and more. Daddy, are you fierce at workplace? Daddy, did you beat inmates in prison? Problem, you need a drink, morning, day, or how to drink. 90% case of you imagine one week or two for time, or one month, still time. Time six months, and you're going to stay here. It's 96 times, I will get other people. Because the case is totally sugar case. Okay, but that, okay, okay, but that one already got the sugar, right? Yeah, but the sugar, the problem. Here in maximum security, uh, most of the personal spoiler, we have uh, average around 20 inmates under our care. So uh, basically, A to Z, any issues of the inmates, they will always look for the personal supervisor. In the morning, I get the only my anger come out. <laughs> then how you manage? That's how I manage. I try to control myself. What to do? Hmm. positive first. Uh, try to solve the issue. Okay. Then I think I'm going to see Rossi tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to I think he will explain it. He will understand. Okay. Okay, fire fire, come fall in, fall in into hands on your head. Onion, take note, I go one five, huh? Evacuating now for fire drill. Hands on your head, hands on your head. Okay, uh, day room one, all clear, no inmate inside. Huh? I check all the cell already. All clear area, huh? all lock up. We are not just uh, unlock and lock up the inmates. But LBSP, I go to workshop. We also conduct lessons. We create uh, activities for them. Chief. Yes. Yes. How are you? Fine, man. So I need your help, lah. This one, ah. They do ready, right? Mm -hmm. So I need another twenty more. So there are a lot of activities for the inmates. For example, like sport activities, drama, lessons, drawings. Okay, guys. Good afternoon. I just want you all to share how you all feel when you do the painting, before and after the painting. Okay? I saw some of you all completed. Okay, and I saw some of them still uh, haven't completed yet. Lah. So by this Thursday will be our, our last week of completion of this project. This is my past, yeah. Okay, so this is your pass. Uh, it's not helping me, so that's why it's falling down. I think I need to chop down the tree and restart again. Okay. Yeah. So in order to have a fresh start, uh, I draw this tree that is being chopped away.
this is my fourth incarceration. Uh. My first incarceration uh, when I was 18 was on 2008. Because they say that you have to go to prison to seems to be strong. So, so I quite looking forward to for my imprisonment. Uh. Okay, uh, Bravo can grab me 507. There was no law la, in my life. So basically, whatever I want, I just reach out for myself. La. I'm the uh, rules and law la, because I was on drugs. When I am actually short of money, the easy way out is to go and uh, theft. La. I was facing a divorce. Ah. Then my mom also got cancer. So I maybe don't know how to handle my emotion. I start small drugs just to immunize myself. And for this time, I feel that I really need to change ah, because i tired of the keep coming back. Ah. Because of drugs, I actually lost my mama. And I lost my daughter. Uh, custody. So I told myself I don't want to fail again for these two people. For my this incarceration, uh, I don't have any contact with my daughter. La. I love her a lot. La. Before I come in uh, every weekend, uh, if I can, uh, definitely I will bring her out, make her happy. The last time I saw my daughter uh, was a few days uh, before I get caught. My daughter told me and tell me, uh, can you just don't uh, commit any more crime? But then when she said that, I really commit the crime. La. So this one year plus, going to three, she never come and visit me. I try to uh, write to my ex uh, to through her contact my uh, daughter, but then uh, I didn't get a response from my ex-wife. Yeah, I think it's because uh, those mistakes i I done, uh, must have been really hurt her. La. Maybe she don't want me to uh, in contact with my daughter too. La. If my wife misses a visit, misses a second visit, when she misses, I feel very disappointed. La. Grayson's goal is to strengthen his relationship with his family, to basically to be a father and a husband. If there's no family support for Grayson, it would make it even challenging for him to change because there is no goal that he is uh, working towards. My wife, she wrote me a letter. She did mention that she wanted to divorce with me. I was like stunned. I, I don't know how to answer her. Uh, she had written for me, not this, only this sentence. Uh. It's been since 2009, when she first got pregnant, I was inside in prison already. I just left one year plus, then you do this. If you want to do this, must well do this when I was just sentenced. Sometimes uh, I would think that maybe, well, I don't know my wife, if who. We all human, we all also need someone to be, to care. I went to approach the psychologist to ask them what, what should I do for this marriage. Uh? They asked me to get a piece of paper to write um, five things that I want from this marriage and five things that I... why I don't want to con continue this marriage.
Okay, thank you. Actually, every day we get this tab, which is at uh, 5 o'clock. Every day we only can use the limit of uh, 1.5 hour. La. We have this so called info center. I will check it out on the info news every day. La. After that, then I will check anybody who write to me. La. The one who write me most is my girlfriend. La. This photo is in the uh, inside the e-letter. She sent a copy, then they actually scan and put inside the e-letter. Yeah, the, the first photo is uh, I bring my daughter go out and play the uh, bouncy castle. So the second one is I with my girlfriend at Fort Canning. Okay, so this is what she wrote to me la. Maybe if I met you earlier, you wouldn't fall for drugs for the second time. For the nine months we spent together, I do see and feel you are a good person and have a potential to do better. So basically, I have to read my girlfriend's letters for a few days, then after I reply her, like one shot. One e-letter, we can have about 8,000 words. Uh. So I will try to use out my maximum, so in order to not left out any spaces. Uh. My name is Umar Iskandar, I'm Sultan. Apprehended for drug trafficking. Resigned to my fate, uh, because it's hard for most drug traffickers to escape the gallows. Uh. My name is Umar Iskandar, I'm Ahmed Sultan. I'm 41 years old this year. I was apprehended in April 2012 for drug trafficking. 35.31 gram of pure dimorphine. Basically, if I was found guilty in the court of law, I'll be hanged by the neck. I was petrified. I really think I'm going to die. I even make my own will. That was really a big blow for us because that time I don't know how to tell my parents that her he charge was death penalty. Anak orang mana yang baik lah, tak boleh nak tanggung lah apa perasaan saya seorang ibu. Perasaan amat je lah, rasa sedih lah anak terjadi macam ini. My mother, my sister. All of them already prepared for the worst. Huh? On 2015, January, they were my first trial huh? for eight days. The time was insufficient. So on 2017, we go for another eight days of trial. Huh? So during that trial, my counsel really worked hard. Huh? Because he's trying to create a reasonable doubt. Huh? So that the court want to reduce the sentence. Huh? Because I already told him I want to go to the gallows. Seriously, I'm, I'm very scared. I'm very scared that am I going to lose a brother? Really, I don't know what to do. Ah, uh, apa kita berdoa lah. Kita mesti nak selalu berdoa lah. Apa yang terjadi ni tak pada suara tak lah lah. Itu je yang kita boleh buat lah. So after the second trench of trial, we went to a third trench of trial. That was on 2018, June. Then I saw my counsel came out from the judge room. Uh, he told me that, Skandar, now they decide to give you an offer. 37 for the trafficking, one year for the consumer and possession to run consecutively. Yeah. And uh, lucky, yeah. the judge gave me 24 years for the second trafficking and one year for the concession and possession. Yeah. I, go, I take the offer. So, from my court, they sent me to maximum security. Yeah. So, basically, there's two televisit per month. Uh. And my mother and my sister will take their turns uh, to come and visit me every month uh, without fail. Uh. Rain or shine.
Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Eh, buat tak? <laughs> Macam ni. Apa sebab? Apa sebab? Baik, sihat. Alhamdulillah. Kau makan belum? Belum, Mak. Aku belum makan lagi. Ha? Aku belum makan lagi. Tadi kelam aku dah. Mak belum. Nanti kejap lagi aku bawa Mak pergi makan. My mother is illiterate. She can't write my letters. In our prison for five times, she will come and visit me. And usually, she will say, when you go in again, I won't visit you again. But when I when I came in, she will come. Ah, ini yang Mak Abu baru dapat tadi gambar kecil-kecil kau. Gambar kau, gambar Mak Eh, gambar Mak Sura. Tuan, Mak, 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 so as I grow up, the relationship change to like a the conversation is like a friend conversation. I try to make joke to cheer her up. I don't want to think that to be sad ah by looking at me. So I will try not to say all the things that will make her sad ah. For us, 25 years compared to death penalty is so much different. He is here for us. We can visit him every month. We can talk to him. We can listen to him. Mak berharaplah supaya apa yang tujuh tahun ni akan jadi yang terbaik lah. Insya Allah lah mak mak teng tengok tujuh apa tengok tengok dia lah tengok jenguk jenguk dia doakan dia tak tahu lah ajal maut ni. Lagi kita hidup lah. Lagi kita hidup. Dengar, dengar, kena. Apa yang kau belajar, kau simpan. Kau simpan tau. Nanti kau keluar, kau keluar kan. Kau, apa yang kau belajar, kau buat. It's not about keeping them in. It's about preparing them to return to their community if the family is intact and supportive and welcoming for the inmate. It gives them a better chance of of staying crime and drug free. Assalamualaikum. Anda yang cakap kat dalam. Dah habis. Good bye. Oh, bye. Okay, bye bye. Hey, what's my? Uh, previously, they don't share anything to the officer. The moment they come inside, they see blue uniform. For them, it's like an enemy, you see. How are you? Yeah, no, it's three. Still, not, not running my mind. <laughs> but now, uh, it, it, it is changing. They, they are sharing a lot of things. So as a personal supervisor, we interview them three months once. But uh, sometimes when the inmate have issues, they can come and request to see us anytime they want. Yeah, I lost so much. I, I, lo I already lost my dad. Okay. Okay, I lost, I lost my house. I lost my house. You need to think about your daughter. La. Mm. I know she already lost me. What's the point? If you get what I mean, what's the point? Rather than I share my pain and she see my pain. So I just put it there. And that's it. No, no, you cannot say like yeah, that. That's wrong already. Yeah, I will kill myself. I will just end my life. Grayson, you have televisit. Okay, Bravo, can you grab me cell 508 for televisit? Okay, yeah. After that day, she said that she wanted to divorce. Never really think that she would come ready. Lah. I'm afraid that I might not change. So if God really, if I can't change, then she will definitely leave me, you know, she say. So this is like so-called my last chance. Uh. Like, I also understand, uh, like, 
if I'm the one outside, so I don't know whether I can wait so long. But for now, she's willing to wait and give me a chance, one more chance, so that I feel happy about it. Then <laughs> <laughs> I thought that she really forget me, like how I've been treating her, the love for her. But at the end, I did. I feel like oh, she didn't forget me. Yeah. She still put me in her heart. Feel my heart like very pain now. <laughs> Then can I put on how we boy surprise I said some more put on her? I don't know if you can put on the thing was young and cannot think. Oh, you request a lot. It's in request a lot. So I got something that I got to tell you. I'm going 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 to tell you. I think I try it in the morning. I can't wait until the morning. It's about 3 o'clock. Because usually, the children are at school. No, it's not a weekend. I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid of it. If I don't hear it, I'll tell them to call them. 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 Weekend. 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 Hopefully, by this weekend, I can make a call, then talk to her and tell her everything. Normally, how you manage your stress? I'll read, um, then uh, work out a bit. Yesterday, that day also very stressed. Uh, I don't know who to look for. It's all because of me, because I didn't give, I can't give her the love that a father needs. I can't be there for her. I don't know what I can do. After the visit, I look for officer. Hi, listen. Sergeant Mutan came. I don't trust people so easily. Are you? Okay. Although you forget the request or he will ask you, uh, you did request something right that I forgotten. He's very good officer. So I trust, trusted him. I share with him a lot also. I don't know whether it does affect her because uh, when I got caught, the commando team all come out. They take the shield. Or come. They ask the children come out, but the police all go in. Huh? And they saw, they all saw everything. These few days, going home late. I don't know why. Sometimes she locked herself in the room no. or toilet. Then she start to scream. Then my wife tried to talk to her. She go to the toilet and scream again. I said she follow my wrong footstep. Uh, so I gone through. Then I mix with a lot of people. Then I see a lot. So some of my daughter is a girl. So I'm so scared. Some of I with my daughter every few years never really communicate. When last time you meet your daughter? Ask myself, it's been really very long. If I'm not wrong, it's about maybe last year. When there's nothing to do before sleep or what, yeah. yeah we think about all the past. I'm the one who will spoil everything, yeah. It is like a pressure cooker. 
if there are other issues that they encounter, for example, uh, problems in the family, it would result in a uh, pent up, you know, frustration or extreme sadness that they may not be able to uh, know how to express. So what uh, we do is to um, help them to, to talk about these things, at least releasing a little bit of this pressure so that they, they can function uh, normally. My late father did an operation on April 2020 uh, before his birthday. Then he passes on 17th of December 2020. March 2021, then I just served my sentence on it. My dad suffered with stage 4 cancer, colon. So the regret is there la, because I doesn't talk much with my dad. After my late father passed, my stepbrother took my mom away. Then uh, I'm not close with my stepbrothers. So the contact between me and my mom is very limited because my, I don't know where's my mom. <laughs> so I don't know how she's coping. Eh. Okay, so uh, this is the televisit room. The inmate will sit here and the monitor is where the family member can be seen from the monitor. They must apply and must be approved to visit. Uh, basically, there's an age limit. Uh, it must be 21 years old and above where they can become a main card holder. Card holder means the visit card will issued to the family member. So basically, one card for one inmate. So for uh, inmates, visits are very important for them. Due to COVID, the temporary uh, cease face to face. There are some inmates, they have no visits at all. Their behaviors and everything sometimes are uh, different. They, call, they, they give us challenging times. La. Some of them, uh, they don't, simple thing they don't do. Like we ask them, take in your t-shirt, they don't do. We say, it's, uh, okay, well, Sergeant, why I need every time to take in t-shirt? It's a one-man cell. That loneliness when you can't express yourself to talk to somebody, somebody will not there. You can just pick a phone and say, how are you doing? You take things for granted until you end up here. If you want to visit, you need to have a main card holder, the age of above 21. So my daughter is only 12. <laughs> and I'm still waiting for my friend or my cousin to visit me. But I don't know when yet. There's no visit, there's the struggle is there. So Estrena, you sleep well or not? No, no. How oh, you never sleep? <laughs> because I already have so many problems and I know this is never gonna end well. What you were thinking? Why don't have a family understanding that can talk things out rather than end up dispute? At the day on my sentence, I cannot even see my mom. I cannot even talk to my mom. I cannot even in contact with my mom because of my stepbrother. Never even see her. Never get to see her at all. Mm. Not even a word. Lah. So I tell my daughter, lah, in between these two years, if anything happened to her, how am I supposed to forgive myself? You want to say that uh, my daughter gonna feel lost again that doesn't have a father. She grown up with a mother. And I know she'll be taking care well with her mother. So what's more? Rather than I share my pain and she see my pain. So I just put it in and that's it. I will kill myself. I will just end my life.
Hello, good morning. Can I speak to Ma'am Rashida? Hi, Ma'am. This one, uh, Sergeant Mouton here from B1. This uh, regarding uh, inmate Kai, Ma'am. We need your assistant. Kai, she is a bit emotionally disturbed. So when uh, there, there's concern about safety, usually the officers will respond first. If need be, if they need support, that's when uh, our psychologists will come in and, and support them. I was granted a phone call. Okay. Call my mom. Hmm, you did. How do you feel? Uh, frustrated. Yeah? Frustrated, angry. You can't do much. Mm. But yeah, let them be. Uh, this is what they want. Right? So. Mm. Well, what do you mean this is what they want? My stepbrother like to control things. I called my mom and I said, is everything okay? Your appointment. She says, yes, uh, appointment all well, taken care. But when I ask about the house, my stepbrother will loudspeaker the phone. And that's where my stepbrother wife Jump in and say that, oh, yeah, this is my father's house. All I know that my daughter tell me that uh, my stepbrother tell her, if you want your father's stuff, take it and get out from the house. Three things. Uh. First is the things that cannot be bite. It's my memory with my family in that house, and I grown up there. The 10 minutes of a phone call is just come to waste. Uh. My worry is to start all over again, back to square one. Because I have a daughter who's gonna stay with me soon, and if I don't doesn't have a accommodation to stay, how am I gonna support my daughter? Had enough? Of. You've had enough. Had enough. Well, enough yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. Frustration, anger, yeah. to a point that I want to suicide and stuff. Some of them may feel depressed because of things that happen uh, outside and they're not able to solve it. It's uh, teaching them skills is really important. Whenever they feel angry, uh, they're equipped with these skills that they can um, help soothe themselves or help them to uh, feel calmer. Outward anger is, is when we use violence on others. And for yourself, this frustration and this anger, we try very, very hard to cover that part you very quickly go to problem solving. That's when we hurt ourselves. We are violent towards ourselves. When you experience a strong feeling, maybe sadness, that you stay with it, that you allow yourself to feel it, and it's okay to cry. While well, you try so hard to not be violent towards yeah. others, but you do that to yourself, think about hurting yourself. That's the part that you really need to be very, very careful because that's also an act of violence. Hang in there and to let it pass. When you feel sad and you cry, it's okay uh, because it will pass. just a minor thing that a small thing that I need in myself. It's a, a hook. It's not stick already. The double side just drop. I look for the officer for help. Um. Then the next day he just treat that nothing happened. Don't take things too personal, okay? So one time, two time, I okay lah. I read by the third, fourth. He never do for me. Very pissed off, very, very pissed off. Worst thing, maybe like I get to hit him or what. Okay, bravo, take note. Can start unlocking hero image. I was apprehended for drug trafficking. I was petrified. I don't know how to tell my parents that he charged was death penalty. We went to a third test of trial. Uh, he told me that, Skandar, now they decide to give you an offer. 24 years for trafficking and one year for possession. So from high court, 
the semi to maximum security ya. Jadi I left with 50 days to go until my release date on the 21st January. I've collected all these items so that I can reward myself every single night for my countdown. He is a very good inmate, but doesn't mean all the good inmates are good citizens. We have a lot of experience where the inmate obey, but after two months they come back. They fail to become a good citizen. On three different occasions, I was carrying three different types of weapons. Actually, the first weapon uh, I got was a samurai sword. Uh. I planned to go down to this place to meet this guy. I just want to like slash him, then I walk off uh, to actually teach him a lesson. She afraid that I might not change. So if God really, if I can't change, then she will definitely leave me, uh, she said. So he's like, so-called my last chance. Uh. Hello, how are you doing out there? Everything been fine for you? How is our daughter? What school did she get into? Does she miss me? Are you still very angry on me? Still very hate me? I want to apologize for my past words and action which have hurt you. I want to seek uh, forgiveness from uh, a lot of people. Lah. One of them is, I hope, forgiveness from my uh, ex-wife. And I hope to be given a chance to take care of my daughter. Okay, uh, so a little bravo. Can okay, start unlocking the room yet. Hey guys, stand by guys. Okay, once ready, come fall in. Right now, the time is uh, 2 o'clock. Okay, your yard is 2 hours. Okay, come, carry on. I want to put some requests. You want to put what? Yeah, uh, some requests. Uh, I want to put... Uh... So, for inmates, most of the times, the only contact person is the officer. Lah. So they have any requests or anything, any issue, they always look for their personal supervisor, which is the officer, like myself. I want to request for accommodation. Oh. After release, then I want to find a room to stay. OK, OK, Ken. I left about eight months in my sentence. Uh, one biggest worry is my accommodation. So when I release from here, I definitely don't have a roof. Just to check, how about your family? Yeah? Uh, where does your family stay and everything? Because uh, I very long, I never go back home already. So, yeah. My only support last time is my mama. Mm. So, but then she passed away already. Uh. So, uh, I cannot actually uh, go back to home. Uh. Oh, your siblings? Uh, any of your siblings? Uh, we are not very close contact. So, you have no contact with them? Uh, no, no. You will be staying alone? Uh? Uh, with my girlfriend. Because I have a fiancé waiting for me outside. Uh. So my first only step is to actually stable myself first. Then that is where I was uh, explore the other's plannings. Uh. They will arrange an interview with you. Then you explain everything to the social worker. Uh. OK. When outside, uh, I don't have accommodation. So uh, I don't have enough rest. I cannot really concentrate on my work. So without work, uh, definitely my money also facing issue. So that is where all my negative and crime mindset uh, come in. So that is why I repeated my offence and coming back here. All right, gentlemen, today is your reward redemption day. We're watching a movie. Good job on accumulating enough points for the movie session. Keep up the good work and your good conduct. Any questions for me? Yes, All right. Yes,
If they are well behaved from the whole week, we will give them a point. On the Friday, they can choose what rewards they want. This one is considered our lucky day. So usually it's about three to four months once. La. Although inside here we watch the movies all, it's like very, very bad little one. La. To see movies is like something very precious to us. La. Nicer than watch in the cinema. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe this. When we lost something, then we appreciate something. Now we're having movies, uh, so it's uh, related to our programs. Uh, heroes, like how we manage our emotions and uh, our family's violence, violence, all that. Uh. The Violence Intervention Program, or HERO in short, is actually meant for inmates with violence antecedents. So they will actually undergo this program with counsellors to help them understand their offences better, train their cognitive abilities. Right, hello, Kai, Grayson, afternoon. Oh, you all just had a haircut. Uh. I'm Rashida. I'm a psychologist with the Singapore Prison Survey. What we do as psychologists is to do assessments, and this would help to address triggers that would lead to violent behaviour or aggression. Okay, notice the outline of your hands, the fingers, and then the spaces between your fingers. If there are any thoughts going through your mind, acknowledge it. Would that be something that you would be doing next time? We are the snow. <laughs> because it's too detailed. It too might, detailed? It might trigger other things. When it triggers, acknowledge it. And move. Your hand, I saw a little scar earlier. It might, that might have triggered something. Anything, any person, any place, we get triggered until to the point of rage. And what happened to our behaviour when we are very angry? If you come in action, exactly, exactly. Family can help them change. It can also be a trigger factor. For example, they may have issues with communication with each other, which may lead to family violence. Do you think nagging uh, is also a form of communication? Yes. Yes, you can yes. say yes. Uh. Why, yes. Why, why do you say so? Uh, show that they care for you. Lor. They care for so you. So that's right? why they neck. Uh. They bother to neck. Sometimes they neck too over already. Uh. <laughs> like. Okay. What about it that makes it um, irritating? They keep gonna... saying it, then they repeat. They say it again, then repeat. Keep rewind. Also. So there is this thought. You should understand me. You're my family, right? And because at the same time, doesn't seem like that's happening. Like I got this situation. So I just normal talk to my friend. Then uh, my wife would think that why you can share your friend, why you cannot share with me. And why do you choose a friend instead of your wife? Like example, like I say, okay, after this sentence, uh, planning to like go and take some course for cooking or this. Then she would just answer me, uh, you want to go and learn? Uh? You cook, Maggie me also don't know, you want to go and learn? Uh? <laughs> then no need, la, you must well come home, I teach you. Oh, oh, allow, is it this yes, that, that's a good example. Okay, pause there. Very good, very good. Okay, let's get help from the other guys. Uh. And she said, Wow, you cannot even cook Maggie Mee. Well, what do you think her perspective, what she's thinking, what's behind that? So maybe uh, she wants to take this time to spend time with you because she share the but food. But the problem is, she wants also to know how not, not, not really how to cook. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have her before? Never. Like, Never. I myself, I don't know how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really about expectations. If you look at it, right, it's really uh, listening and reflect uh, what is my spouse or my family members, uh, for that matter, trying to tell me. 
reflect what they might be feeling. Okay? At times, right, they may also feel awkward to be telling you something so directly. But what's important is, you and your wife need to talk about it. Lah. <laughs> I plan like after I get my new passport, then I move. <laughs> you cannot play drugs in Singapore. If I were to succeed in something, but without drugs, and I would take probably at a slower rate, how does that sit with you? Boring. It is certainly quite worrying if he's articulating those thoughts. Attention to all inmates, fall in for mouse to check now. I repeat, fall in for mouse to check now. Master check is actually unique to prisons. So this is also done for prison school. Good afternoon, man. Good afternoon. After I was sentenced, right, I reached the maximum institution. I calculate how much time I left in prison. So after cutting off the remission and the remands, I left with 10 years. I know there is a prison school. There is a NT level, NA level, O level and diploma. So I do the calculation. Ah. One year for NA, one year for O level and two years for diploma. Maybe after the diploma, I was to pursue a study in a degree course. Ah. So along the way, the registration is open. Ah. So I submit the application form. I feel happy ah, that I'm selected and fortunate. Because from what I know, there's a lot of applicants. Ah. So for this year, I move on to take my O level. Ah. So every year, they can actually apply for whatever um, levels they want to apply for. It may be N, O or even A. So after they have registered interest, we will actually clear them based on conduct or even uh, runway in prisons, how long more they have with us. So the interest loan is 1,006 divided by one quarter. So right now, it's 8.25. So usually this is the time that I do my revisions with my cellmates. 253. Yeah. In prison, this is how you study. Yeah. You have to sit on the floor. As my age catching up, you feel the pain. Yeah. So, for each subject, right, you will receive a worksheet that is stick. No? We don't have TV, we don't have radio, we don't have computer, we don't go in social media, so we just spend our time on study. And that really make our time fly very fast. So, sometimes you'll be shocked at people asking for more worksheet. Yeah. So, after class, Usually, my teacher will tell us, okay, you need to do this topic, this topic, and to be handed up by the next lesson. If I don't do it every day, I can't catch up. For prison school, it means they're actually very busy. They actually have a much lesser free time here. Median sentence takes about three to five years. So if we actually um, let them study, uh, compress our syllabus, compressing um, from four years to one year, we actually allow more inmates to benefit from the education within prisons. So uh, I will study until 9.45. After that, I will pack up my things, and rinse myself and go to sleep. Uh, because I have to wake up 4 a.m. next morning. My day start at 4.30 a.m. I take a bath, brush my teeth, right? I will do the prayers. Uh. 4.45, the staff will issue us the hot drinks uh, for breakfast. Uh. So we're having our breakfast early in the morning. Because we have to be at class by 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh.
when you go to class, you don't feel like you're inside prison. It's totally different. When we talk to teacher, right, it's like, it's like a friend. to the situation of writing pizza. Going back to the PAC. Ah, what is PAC? Can somebody remind me what is PAC? I've been teaching here for almost two years. I teach English here, uh, mainly the O-levels. So P is purpose. Was a little bit intimidated A at the start. Audience. Many of them had rather rough looking tattoos. A is audience. But once I stepped into the classroom, I realised that they were just like any ordinary students eager to learn and very concerned about how to do well for the exams. Uh, mainstream students will always have access to online resources or even expensive private tuition. But over here, they are quite uh, reliant on me to prepare them for the exams and to provide career guidance. Hoodie number three, Iskanda. Yes, Iskanda. Say, I, I talk about my the skills I have. Uh. Yes, of course. I'm a concise and meticulous person. When it comes to details, it will, will be helpful for the event planning for the children, uh, such as the sport day. That's the skill I have. Oh, you are a what? A meticulous person? Conscientious. Uh, conscientious. Uh, conscientious and meticulous yes. person. When it comes to detail. I wonder where you get those words from. <laughs> from you. <laughs> uh, experience. Iskanda is a very lively and rather humorous student. I mean, beyond that, because he's so eager to learn, he's actually very hardworking. Question so far? Yes, sir, sir. Mm. I mean, for the, for the two, right? I just put head of citizenship at email.com, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The email yeah. is up to you. Then, to, I, to... then I got the subject, right? Yeah. So, phones in general means it can be any screen. So, in fact, by changing a to the, it's actually wrong. Oh. Mm. Actually, uh, I believe I'm a bright student uh, because I came from the express stream. But unfortunately, I tend to do mistakes in my life and get myself straight away from the school, right? To commit crimes. Uh. If I'd given a second chance, I'd be at the gallows or maybe I'd be hanged already. I'd be dead by now. So, if I'm having this opportunity, right, I will use it wisely. Uh. You intend to do our part-time diploma course, right? Uh, intend to do diploma in logistics. Once you complete that, there's even further studies. Yeah. yeah, further studies. The Bachelor of Science in Logistics and Supply Chain Management. You can even do it while you're in prison school. You don't have to wait till you're outside. For this time round, I don't want to waste time in prison. I choose study. Yeah. Because in future, with a certificate, it helps to get a better job. Yeah. Once you didn't have a job, you will tend to do the illegal things, you know, because you need money, you know. Because when you are out for prison, when you open your eyes, you need to think, think about money. How to live, how to get money, how to survive, what to eat. I really need this uh, to change, to have a good start later on my life. Uh. Can buy brown unlock brown two zero four brown two zero four. Can buy Proceed to the yard. Okay, guys, uh, before you start for the yard, remember to put on your mask properly and ensure safe distancing. Okay, I see. Afternoon, guys, carry on.
most of us are looking forward for the yard time because only we have twice a week for the yard. This is different from the maximum institution because in maximum security, I will go for yard every Monday to Saturday for two hours. The stressful day in class, memorizing the formula, doing all the revisions. The one hour and one fifteen minutes is so precious for us. For us as a student, uh, yeah, it's very important. Uh. I came to prison school on the 3rd January 2020, and that's the first time I've been to the open yard. The first thing I see is the open sky. Because the maximum institution, all this while I've been seeing a ceiling. I never seen an open sky for such a long time. Then I see there's an aeroplane. I see there's a bird, right? This is what I've been missing for such a long time in the prison. I really, really miss all these things. I miss the rain very much. I like cold weather. I like rain. I enjoy raining days, even when I'm outside. I miss the sun, miss the rain, miss getting outside. The view is very important uh, for us. It's like the only way that we can feel outside. There's a black maria, they call it. The one that comes in and out through the front gate. There's the one that from here to court and court come back here. So every time when I saw that bus, I just don't want to see it again because it can remind me that that's the starting of the whole entire thing. Were there difficulties that you encounter when you were out before you come in here? The influence of getting money, cars, mm. uh, credit card, and all this stuff. Yeah. I use eyes for things that I do in, in life. I just move on like three days without sleeping, four days without sleeping, five days without sleeping. Because you keep on uh, gathering more and more issues. You know, if you stop, you're going to lose like 2,000. So why must you stop? How does that sit with you, knowing that if I were to achieve, if I were to succeed in something, but without drug, and I would take probably at a slower rate, how does that sit with you? Boring. What are your plans um, in terms of drugs when you're released in the future? I plan like after I get my new passport, then I move. <laughs> so, uh, you cannot play drugs in Singapore. But it is certainly quite worrying if he's articulating those thoughts. But in the end, uh, once they're released, we, we don't know what are the different uh, things that might happen outside. He does have a very good family support and his uh, ability to connect with them, his willingness to connect with them. So these are some of the things that might actually help Bruce D keep to his change path. For Bruce D, you know, giving advice to other inmates on exercises, it could be seen as a gang-related activity. For 
Rusdi, I do see him a bit uh, in the open yard, you know, giving advice to other inmates on how to do a particular set of, you know, exercises. Uh, I mean, based on, on his expertise. In a way, we would encourage because it, it builds rapport amongst the, the inmate. But at the same time, it could be seen as, uh, you know, a gang-related activity. So it's a bit in the middle of the fence uh, for that one. They will ask me question and question for tips so that I can guide them. We have a kind of grouping together that eventually do HIIT here and it's very, very high intensity rather than the normal one outside because down here, we can really focus uh, fully on our activities. Of course, the people are fitter here, of course, yeah, definitely. The majority of our offenders are actually drug offenders. So they come in with certain lifestyle and they're scrawny, skinny, you know. But once they go out, they're fit. Because the food they eat, the time they spend exercising, that's the irony, right? Rizdi? Okay, come get ready for your televisit. Okay. Okay, So who's going to visit you? Uh, my girlfriend, sometimes my mother. Okay, uh, how often do you come and visit you? Every month? Okay, Twice a month. Twice a month. Okay. I'm Rusdi's uh, very close friend. Technically, I would say, yes, I am his girlfriend. But because the relationship is so complicated, it's very hard to actually say out in public. I also have interest to actually go back to fitness. I don't think you should go back to that. Mm, my fitness mentor was the one that introduced me to math. He used it for bodybuilding as a form of uh, water redu uh, reduction. Uh, as a form when he get, the muscles get very lean. Ten years ago, he took drug. That was the beginning of their life, uh, upside down. The first time Rusty took drug when she came home to the Mara, dia nak lemparkan kipas angin tu kat cik. Without drugs, he's really just like a normal person, a good one. Tak adalah ah ni kali ni mak kasi ah udi apa udi kebebasan lah untuk udi dah besar apa dah tiga puluh lebih apa dia boleh fikir jadi mak tak nak uh, macam dulu. Yalah mak kasi kebebasan sekarang masalahnya negeri yang Udi duduk tu tak kasi. <laughs> jaga diri sendiri. Dia tak macam mak lain. Hmm, jaga diri sendiri eh. Uh, mesti nak percaya diri sendiri. Ah. Uh, Tengoklah sana. Oh, orang pun boleh percaya. Ah uh, itu tahu important. He has to build that trust together with us because we can't trust him fully. I like him in prison because all can control him. Lah. He never take drug and, and he behave. Because if outside, ah, nobody to jaga him, you know. How can I help you today? What happened? Um, yesterday I played a uh, takro and then I had slight injury on my hamstring, left hamstring. Left hamstring? Okay. 
So we've got quite a lot of people who used to be dependent on uh, substances. So they will come here and you know they will seek to find medications which can be addictive like um, some painkillers and sometimes they will not tell you what they're looking. They will phrase it in a different way and you just have to suspect and clarify them. Can I just confirm, do you fall down or you just stretch your muscles? Stretch my muscles. Just stretch your muscles. Uh, no, nobody hit you or anything so far. Uh. No What's challenging would be to sift through those undertones. You might think twice before you give them what they ask for. We have to be aware, I mean, so that we don't, you know, accidentally propagate the behaviour. Yeah, I just lift up your muscles. Right? Go around here. Lah. Okay. Any injury to your knees? The hips? Hips, yes. Uh, hips also can. Uh. Okay. You can walk uh, today. Still can walk. I had a look. He probably just strained his hamstring, so I gave him some painkillers and advised him to walk around more if he can. Uh. If you're not well, you just come back and see us again. Okay, okay. okay take care. Have a good day. Good morning, everybody. Um, so today we are going to start our schema elective module. So generally in their childhood, and if cheating someone else was rewarding in the past, that increases the chance of using violence in the future. Tell us your name. Share one of your happy childhood memories. Whoever wants to share, they just start. Yeah, my name is Grayson. Uh, my one childhood memory is when the time we'll be able with my siblings and my father and mother together. That the period of time, I can remember one part that we were quite happy together. Okay, my name is Buna. So my one of my happy childhood memory is when I started to play drugs. <laughs> I can't seem to think of anything. I blocked out my childhood. <laughs> So sometimes growing up is good, sometimes growing up not so good. And sometimes some people go away growing up having certain fears, anxieties, thoughts to protect themselves. Anger? Why anger? I was three years old that I can remember because my mom was pregnant about, for my sister. And my late father working as a part-time part and job hops. I think my mom trying to ask my father, the, where's the meal coming from? Mm. My late father beating my mom up, the mob would snap kena my late father and I'm bleeding. When they share stories about themselves, about their childhood, we're reaching out at the core belief to unpeel each layer and to address what is really an issue that's driving the violence. We will then teach them how to challenge or accept these thoughts, so that they will come up with a more balanced perception. I'll, I'll give you all some colour paper, OK? I got four colours. Yellow, green, red and blue, OK? When you put it over your, your eyes, what do you see? What colour is this? Big, big, big. White. 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 Big. Red. <laughs> you go down, what, what colour is it? Green. green. The cut I hold is still green. Yes. But the colour that you put on makes it look like a different colour. When we talk about schema, it's like that. It's something like that. When we go through certain experiences, it colours a bit. Go through even more experiences, it colours a bit. And after a while, that becomes a permanent colour. So, for example, if I am growing up and I'm telling myself I need to stay safe, I better hide from view so that I don't get beaten up. But if every problem that they face, they, oh, yeah, okay, I, I better hide. Then it becomes a problem already, right? For Kai especially, there are repeated times that um, he used violence to get what he needs. And if it works, it would further strengthen that belief that violence works. So violence will solve my problems. After a while, it became like a, a, a response, an automatic response. Back then, my dad suffered with stage 4 cancer. We have my dad appointment. La. He's supposed to meet up la. with my ex-girlfriend. She doesn't turn up. That's where it led me to frustration, anger.
She replied after a few days. She said that she's going to explain to me everything. She says that she was on the way. And that time was around 5.30. And I just keep on waiting at the MRT station. Uh, she turns up at 9.30. She did not explain me at all. That is too much already. Eh? So that's where I think I burst out. I grab her wrist. Why you say you were on the way, you came in like a fool? You know my responsibility is big. What if anything happened to my dad? Are you going to be responsible? And I feel good eh, that I grab her. Because to show the pain, the struggle that I've gone through, after time flies, I understand myself. It's not worth eh. There's There's something new that I learned eh, in myself. It's just a minor thing, that a small thing that I need in myself. It's a, a hook. It's not stick already, the double side just drop. I look for the officer for help. Bar. Then the next day, he just treat that nothing happened. Very peace off, very, very peace off. Don't take things too personal, OK? One time, two time, I OK. La. I read by the third, fourth. He never do for me. It's really very hard la, to control his temper. I really wanted to hit him or what, all this. Reason, a lot of things we have to put up requests. Us, like for pencil, we need to put requests. Double shaver for those really very uh, grow very fast, they also need to request. Actually, I need one more hook here. Sometimes the hook also not strong, then they drop. Then I need another one for my tower. But I'm still waiting for them to get back to me. Then we keep asking, hey, sir, have you done the request for me? Some of the project, I'm sorry, I forget. Never, they never help you put out, so at the end of the day, still no one put, then you have to find other officer. In the cell, we will keep thinking, like, when will he approve? I'm anxious, like, like trouble. Then I got some problem. I find that going to Stava got grudges with me. Whatever I asked him to do, he like, never do for me. I scared later one day I explode, then not nice to him or so. Don't take things too personal. At first, one time, two time, I okay. Mm. La. By the third, fourth, he never do for me. Why didn't you approach him, ask him what happened? For now, maybe I see him also, I feel very hot, very stressed. I feel like I want to go and straight approach him. If Grayson uh, show defiance, uh, disrespectful against officer, a report will be submitted and he will be punished. We will seriously take action. His release will be delayed. It can be at another two more days. In this temper, it's really very hard uh, to control. So I know myself when his answer to me is like too unreasonable, I might get angry. So well, I don't want to talk to him and get myself in trouble. I understand you're angry, you are so upset and everything. But I try to think the consequences. La. We can't expect everything uh, to be happen uh, according to what we want. Don't let your emotion take charge of you. So far, you manage it well, so continue that. So any issue, anything, you just come and look for me. So if you recall, we made you do a survey, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the survey was meant to help us find out what are your schemas. The schema that you scored quite highly was emotional deprivation. It's the expectation that the desire for some emotional support will not be met by others. Going back to as far back as you can remember, when do you recall having these feelings? When I was three. Uh, you just have to listen to my voice and just bring yourself back to the time around three or four years old. Close your eyes. If you don't feel so comfortable, you can look down. Can you describe what is the scene that you're looking at? In front of me, Saiwi. What was happening around you? The sky. We walk a lot mm. from places to places. 
what were some of the things that you were thinking to yourself at that age? Where am I going? Yeah, why people got house, why we keep on moving? We never stay at that one particular place for a long time. Always two, three days, then move around. We was homeless. How does young Kai look like? I did not smell. It's confused. Huh? We only eat uh, one meal per day and I always get hungry when I was a kid. But what is going through your mind? Nobody was there, nobody gonna listen to you. Mostly just hold yourself alone. As his experience as that young child in that moment, his parents couldn't take care of him. They were unavailable for him, although they were physically there. He was alone. What we can do is we can address it. When he encounters uh, a trigger or a difficult situation, he doesn't have to function like what he had functioned as a three-year-old. If you were to go up to young Kai right now, what would you want to say to him? It's going to be OK. Just uh, stay strong. Don't lose hope. Why? My few close friends who always encourage me uh, when they see uh, something bad going to be happen to me. As an adult right now, hearing himself say, you're going to be OK, don't lose hope. That's where the powerful part of the exercise is. I'm this adult right now who's capable of doing things differently. We're not just looking into to dig an open an old wound, but how we can help it heal, make it part of his strength in, in, to go forward. So after uh, I applied through this FRC, which is a family resource centre, to get a uh, rent accommodation. I am still haven't get their call. I'm still waiting and uh, kind of very worried. So I actually seek Sergeant Mutan for advice. Uh. Regarding your referral for the accommodation, okay. Uh, okay, I got reply this week or next week, they will arrange an interview. Uh. So in, in case if, let's say, fail, uh, how much? Uh? Okay. Let them uh, work first, okay. the first step, okay. to find out because they need to know the eligibility. Do you feel really stressed about this accommodation? Uh, yes, very, very stressed, actually. Yeah. Uh, accommodation is just one issue. No need to be worried, okay? On the day when you release, you won't be uh, homeless. I want you to help think uh, about the job, okay, what you're going to do. You've got seven, eight months for you to really prepare. But the real world outside is more challenging. I imprisonment for three years plus, so I feel a bit like left out from the world. Lah. So now the world also changed already. I'm actually a bit worried that I cannot adapt to outside. It is on for 15 minutes. Put on the loudspeaker. Lah. You don't touch the phone. We try call a few times, couldn't get. His face turned red. Maybe the phone got no battery. Bravo, Kangran 5002. Okay, Rosli. You can pack your item. Now we are transferring you. So you will be attending pre release program. Now uh, I'm at cell 549. I'm gonna be here until the release date. And that is like one month plus away. Okay, Bravo, take note. Can start unlocking the hero image. Let's say she follow my wrong footstep. The first time I stayed to drug when she came home, the Mara, 
dia nak lemparkan kipas angin tu kat cik. Terus dia kat dia keluar dia tak sedar dia kerja. Tak nak lah. Try lah. Nanti sama juga driver driver delivery juga apa. Habis boleh keluar nak buat apa? Nak relax dulu ah penat asyik. I borrowed this book called How to Talk So Little Kids Will Listen. Because we cried so long, I haven't talked to my children, so I want to know like how to really communicate. Uh. My eldest daughter was born uh, 2009, and I was inside prison. Uh. Prison, we have this thing called uh, newborn uh, to carry your newborn. The officer verify the birth cert, everything that this this children is yours. Then they will ask your family to book for the open visit, so you can carry the baby. There will be only 20 minutes for you uh, to carry. But the 20 minutes really mean a lot. So Grayson has uh, an upcoming call with his daughter, and he's feeling. Uh, very nervous. She's a, almost a teenager now. He doesn't know what to say. And he doesn't uh, know whether it would be helpful uh, talking with her. So recently, my daughter tried to go home late, then always used to lock herself in the room, then she started to scream. If you all don't care about me, I don't want me, then you let me go out, she said. I've never gone through this before. Yeah. Is it normal or not for her age? Right? Generally, they would. <laughs> now she's 12 years old, right? At her age, they are starting to be aware of a more effective way to express themselves, their emotions. How should I talk to her? Then I tried to write to her a few times, but she doesn't reply. As a teenager, what do they need? Freedom. Have you taught her cycling before? Yes. So imagine you're holding the bicycle. What would you tell her? Just straight and just cycle, carry on yeah, cycling. Cycle, go on, and you're holding on. You're making sure that she doesn't fall. Yeah, yes. All right. So those are boundaries. After a while. After a while, yeah, slowly I would like let go and then let her cycle herself. In the morning, when I saw him, he told me, Sergeant, today I got a phone call. Ah. Okay, this one for 15 minutes, put on the loudspeaker. Lah. Okay. You don't touch the phone, then I will set 15 minutes here. Lah. He was a bit nervous because we tried call a few times, couldn't get. His face turned red. It's like a bit stressed. Maybe the phone got no battery. Uh, or maybe she blocked the private number. Can block private number. You know, I cannot. I was very anxious. Uh. There's a lot of things that I want to tell her. Uh. Hello. Hello. I'm Sergeant Mugujan here from Singapore Prison Service. Okay. Your daddy is here, Mr. Ang Grayson. I will pass the phone to him. Hello. Hello. How are you? Papa. Yeah, I tried to make myself. I don't want to let her know that I tear also because the whole communicating it will be like we're both of us tearing only. You know, I'm looking at the time. I try my best to talk to her. How are you? I'm good. 
How your PSLE? I don't know yet. Then how you think can we pass? I don't know. Now then Mama say you always late come back. Ah. Next time you late, Mama call, you just tell Mama you'll be late. Oh. Okay. Okay, don't let Mama worry. Oh yeah, then I heard you inside the toilet shout, why? I miss fresh them to school. Then at the end of school, I wait when she I see her running towards me. Yeah, the feeling is like, yeah, I miss almost everything with her. She might think that uh, no one is there for her, no one understand her, no one love her or what. It left another 55 seconds of that. You OK? OK. Is it because nobody shared things with you? No. Then just write to Papa. To me, she's a very good girl, very soft girl. She's my eldest daughter, and then like my princess. Like that. And the last of it, when the time is coming, she starts to cry again. Oh, my heart here pain also, then I'm like, I'm tearing also. OK, I left 10 seconds. Uh. You be good, girl. Yeah. Mm, then anything, you just write to me, uh, then take care, OK? OK. OK, I'll get finished already. Papa, love you. Uh. Yeah. OK, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. If she's watching, I want to tell her that uh, I left with for like one year. Hope that she'll wait for me. I promise you that uh, go out, we'll do what the family should do. Uh. I also promise you that she will not live her life without a father again. Uh. Okay, uh, Bravo can grant 502, 502. Okay, Rosby. Uh, you can pack your item. Okay. So you will be attending pre-release program. This pre-release program in Institution B1. We have them go through some of the reintegration preparation costs and also introduce some uh, financial and computer literacy costs for them. So uh, this will be your cell. You will be staying here until your release. Now uh, I'm at cell 549. I'm going to be here until the release date. And that is like one month plus away. I'm going to watch the cell now. Um, then we're going to reset up the whole entire things again. As per normal. I am so used to my own self. So, when I'm released from here, my biggest fear is to mingle around with people. We have people asking us questions and we need to answer back. So this can be an unpleasant moments, and people don't understand that. So I need a certain time or period that can be occupied back to the normal times again. Hey, you just want to nap, uh, just mengamuk. Uh. You know, I'm screening through the inmates' magazines, usually sent via their family members through the visit. So thereafter, screening will be done to ascertain if there's any hidden messages gang-related messages or contraband like needles hidden inside the spine of the magazine. This uh, censored stamp uh, shows that these magazines have been vetted through la, by the visit centre. Also, books, novels and also photographs will be screened through. Bravo. 
Bravo can grant me day room two slider. Who's this? Your magazine is here. All right. Okay. Okay. This is our magazine. I need your thumbprint to verify that you receive. I'm happy, of course, with the receiving of the magazine. I see this uh, as a gift. The good thing about a magazine or a gift, right, is that it is uh, not the same as the normal uh, everyday that you get. Uh. So the once a month gift uh, is uh, obviously always what people are looking for. It might be not much to you guys outside, uh, but inside, it's like gold, uh, you can see. Uh. I received a Hari Raya card. I think my friend sent me to remind me that I'm not being left out or something like that. I think nobody ever sent me a card before, <laughs> even outside. <laughs> it made me smile. He asked me to enjoy my Hari Raya while I'm inside. And if anything you need a help or what, just uh, text him through e-letters. Prison only give you 90 minutes to log in. So usually I will just type in my password first and scan my wrist tag. Every time you have this urge, well, you have a letter today. <laughs> it's good lah to get a letter from her. It says, Assalamualaikum, lady. Amacam, sehat tak? Hehe. <laughs> Ellie baru habis PSLE seminggu yang lalu. Tak tahu lah pas ataupun tidak. Insya Allah, Ellie get AL25. You know? Okey lah. Sekarang pasal Daddy. Kat dalam Daddy buat apa? Kat penjara ada pembuli tak? Kalau ada, Daddy pernah kena bully atau Daddy bully orang. <laughs> main main aja. Okey, take care. Bye bye, Daddy. Lagi satu, I hope you is proud of me. Kai, it change a lot. There was one time he say he don't want to attend the class. He don't think so the programs can helpful. But after that, slowly we asked him, you go and try. So now, he already two months in the program. He already selected for the peer supporter. Hey! How are you? Hey, Abu. Very good. Hey. You know, that time you really pissed off, really, right? Then the next thing you know, you just want to snap, uh, just mengamuk. Uh. For inmates, when we wear blue uniform, the trust is not 100% sometimes. So when we have a peer supporter, they will also help us to monitor there is any unusual behaviour. They will update us. Lah. Sergeant, I think he needs some help. Lah. Well, we're supposed to share our thoughts with the officers. I just want what strike three hours. What? We'll be watching the same programme lagi. I think you have the right to voice it out. So our is supposed to be a new movie each and every time. But this is not the first time that they play the same this over again. But I also want you to understand that. Aku tak nak tengok engkau serve lagi. Kau nak kena ingat apa yang kita belajar kat sini semua. Take five seconds back lah. Think about the family, especially the loved one. It's not worth it, bro. Kita orang punya image saya cukup tak cukup lah. Sometimes I just need someone like. Macam kau, aku datang, kau berbangga aku. At least, I get the things off my chest. Aku will brought this matter to Sajun Mutan. And hopefully, Sajun Mutan will brought up this matter to SOP or OC. Yeah. 
while I'm still here, I will always be your side lah as a friend. That's the best thing that I can do. <laughs> Don't get me wrong ah. <laughs> I'm married bro. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a set of push up with interval. The interval is by me reading one page, then I continue back with the push up again. With my previous incarceration, I roughly know what the schedule in prison is going to be like. I have started planning uh, how I'm going to spend my time in the cell before even I come in. Exercise is one of my plans to fulfill some of my time here. Exercise requires you to rest a lot as well. So the time flies extremely fast. I realize that I can make use of the time down here. So I put in the schedule with things that I want to do outside, but I couldn't get it done because it requires a lot of patience, teaming, understanding. So before I move in, I already buy around 40 over books. I receive six books monthly from outside. So it was around eight months of suppliers. Then eventually the month goes even faster as well. Bravo, the room one open. Afternoon, sir. Hello, Bung Keng. I've got good news to tell you. So, you'll be undergoing a suitability assessment for committee based program. Ah. Okay, okay. Good? Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. Thank you, right. sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do come prepared with your post release okay. plans. Okay, that's okay. How are you? <laughs> oh, it's okay. All the best, huh? Okay, okay, All right, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Later in the afternoon, we'll be having a O level exam for mathematics. I was helping my friend with Max. Uh. I think when you teach someone, at the same time, you will also gain some knowledge. It doesn't make you to forget. Uh. The first subject will be POA. Uh, I always get good grades for my POA. Uh, always above 90. Uh, Max will be my second favorite subject uh, because it involves numbers. Uh, I can concentrate more. Language uh, is very hard for me. Uh. This is my second time uh, taking O-Level. Last time I took it in uh, 1999. The feeling is different. Uh. I was a uh, small kid, so I, I don't even revise my work. Uh. But for now, when I already uh, discover it, like, I have to do well, uh, so I will revise. Frankly speaking, uh, with all the knowledge I have for Max, I still feel anxious and nervous. We are considered a private exam centre, regulated by the Singapore Examinations Assessment Board. We collect the question papers for national exams on a daily basis to the prison school. Exam, exam. Uh, I left about 30 more minutes for my exam.
Bravo Control can grant cell 507. Okay, Boon King, I'm going to escort you for a PBP. Okay. Yeah, you can bring your slipper. PBP, which is Program Placement Panel, is uh, in the view to see if I'm qualified to serve my last one third of my sentence in the community. There are a few tracks when we talk about community based programs. The inmates will either stay at home, at their own home, in a halfway house, or in a work release facility. Essentially, when they are on community-based programs, they will be tagged electronically. They have to abide by supervision conditions such as curfew hours. My category is Work Release Scheme. So uh, basically, we will transfer to this Work Release Centre. Then we will be released uh, in the morning, like uh, 8 a.m. to go to work. After our work, right, we will uh, go back to the centre so to actually stay there and sleep over there. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, name, email, number? Uh, Tian Boon King. Email number 259132020. Tell me more about your current case. My current case, uh, I got theft, I got uh, cheating, I got drugs, then I got breach of PPO, then... Uh, uh, that's all. Okay, so previously, before this, you were at prison school, correct? Uh, yes. I was there around four months. Why did you give up so fast? That point of time, uh, because I facing my mom uh, passing away. Uh, so okay. that time, I, uh, I cannot concentrate. Uh. Over at prison school site, in the event of any possible irregularity, we always will let the students continue with the examination first. And then because they are here to serve their sentence, they may be charged. I'm pretty relaxed right now because almost 75% of the question I can answer. And fully is the correct answer. My next paper will be English tomorrow. Afternoon. I'm very weak in English. I have to go back and do some revision and see if I can get a good grades for it. You seem to have some drug issue, huh? Uh, yes. For me, it's ice. So even 2019, after your release, uh, you went back to drugs, lah? Uh, yes, because that time after my release 2019, I faced with divorce. Divorce, and you cannot face the pressure, so you went back to drugs. Probably I just want to run away from reality. La. For me, it's quite intense. La. But I hope uh, the officer will see the change in me and uh, grant me the program. So this time round, how different would it be? Okay, this time, inside here, I lost my chance to be a good son. La. So I lost my mom. Then I think it's enough to actually uh, stop me from taking drugs. La. So my mom, I cannot give her anything already. La. So probably this, uh, the last thing I can give her is that I turn over a new leaf. La. What are your plans to remain offence-free and drug-free? So if this chance is given to me, the work release scheme, I can actually have an accommodation and start working already. So once I have a saving, once I release, I can start to rent a home of my own la, and start a family with my uh, fiancé. Okay, so Boon Kev, you have come into the system multiple times. But I noted that you are still attending the HERO program, the electives now. La. After you have completed your elective program, I, I need to hear from your psychologist their assessment on you. Okay. Number two, you have committed some disciplinary offences uh, in the past la, yes. during this incarceration. These are also uh, factors that we will consider. So do not commit any more disciplinary offences. Yes. Then we will discuss your case again. Okay, Rosie, we're going to go through your pre-release interview, okay? Alright.
I'm going to ask you a few questions that has got to do with your plans la, for release. Jim. All pre-release inmates will have to undergo a pre-release interview. We find out the needs and the support they, they are looking for. Uh, it is our responsibility to you know, uh, render uh, assistance right before their release so that they can reintegrate better in the society. Is everything going well with your family? Uh, everything with my family is going well. Okay. They are preparing for the places for me to be at. That's good. So, uh, accommodations are going to stay with your parents? Yeah. Your relationship with uh, every family member good? Yeah, everything is smooth. I've asked him quite a lot about his uh, family because we have inmates not having a stable relationship with their parents or with their siblings. So we need to know whether he can survive outside. Next, do you have a plan to work or study after release? My plans I want to try is the uh, delivery. Uh. So I still got my bike outside. Okay. So I was thinking to do delivery when I'm done. So I just want to remind you that when you work, right, it can be very stressful. Huh? When you get stressed, I don't want you to quit. Lah. I just want to give you a scenario. Just in case you have financial issues, the salary that you get is not enough. Okay. Um, where else can you get money? Where else can I get money, Mama? Where else? Then how about financial aid? Like mendaki or this? I don't know. I, I don't do that. Lah. Okay, but you know these are the places that you can go also, right? Mm. Okay, just don't burden your mom so much. Lah. Okay, I don't. Today, pop my English paper. Honestly, uh, I think I didn't do quite well. Lah, because I don't understand the question. It's talking about language and what I studied uh, yesterday. There's not even a single question about that. I was surprised, ah. Class, time is up. Please stop writing. English is my weakest subject, and I hope to get at least an E8, uh, not an F9, uh, so to pursue a diploma in logistics. Uh. When I read the papers, I see the job vacancies in logistics, and during this COVID outbreak also, I see there's still high demand in logistics. Uh. This diploma will be a good thing uh, for me when I release in US times. Uh. Okay, uh, Rusty, stand by for your release. Hey, okay, uh, bravo. You can grab me 549 uh, for release. Today is the GCE O level results release. So now I just received the results slips. Two copies each. Two copies? Yeah, two copies of the results slip and the cert. Over here, all their original certs, we will save keep for them until they are released. But we will still give them the photocopy of all the documents. Yes, definitely it's a huge day because the students have worked hard for the past year and in fact some of them, they have been with prison school for a couple of years and they definitely look forward to today's results release.
right now I feel quite nervous. Uh, because I'm afraid of my English is out. Uh. I only confident my POA. Uh. I really did my best. So whatever is I have to accept. Uh. Good afternoon. Are you eager to know your result? Nervous. I believe you have done your best. In fact, we are very proud of you. For you to commit yourself to these studies in prison school. Let me now have three to present you the certificate. If our students do well in their results, they can e-letter to their parents and our family members. Pre-COVID days, we had something called an open visit, whereby the loved ones will come and then they will be seated together and then they can share about the results. But this year, they can only do it through phone calls. More nervous, huh? Few more people than my turn. And last but not least, Iskandar. Hey, thank you. No problem. Hey, happy year. Please, uh, don't worry, right? Uh. Everybody got English. Uh. No, not bad, not bad. Hey, thank you. Uh. I feel quite happy. Yeah. I passed all the three subjects. Yeah. In max, I got B3. Yeah. And accounts, I got A1. Yeah. Uh, that's my good subject. Yeah. English is my good subject. Then I get just passed at C6. Yeah. That's the best. I feel proud. Yeah. The last time I think my O level is much more worse than this. My question right now right, is like, say my praises to Omar right, for the good result. With his blessing and his guidance, right, I managed to get this result. Right. So I try to do best for my diploma. Yes, sir. In my plans after being releasing from prison, which is seven years from now. If I get a diploma in logistics, I will definitely contribute to this sector. And at the same time, I would like to help the youth at risk. I would like to give a talk at maybe Singapore Boys Home, Mamadia, or other juvenile homes. Because to me, they are vulnerable. I don't want them to go through what I'm going through when I was young and until I was 41 years old. I just want to tell them that they have to choose their friend and their road in life wisely. Yeah. Because if you set up, you'll be like me. If you're unlucky, you'll be hanged. So my point is, stay away from drugs yeah, and other illegal activities. Yeah. Last but not least, if I did or say something that I hurt you, anyone out there, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think this most probably will be a love novel because it says down here, don't throw away tomorrow. So, <laughs> sounds like something interesting. Eh? It says here, the happiness project. I think this will be a love one if I'm not wrong. So what else can be happiness besides from love? What completes me eh, in life? I want somebody who never give up, so who never leaves. That's the only thing that I want. I just have one person eh, who I can share everything. Everything, my bad, my good, my what. I share that with my late father, but not as much. But I think 
to lean on someone that who believes in you and bring up the best out of you, that is enough. First thing that I want to practice uh, and to make perfect is that I want to obey all the rules and regulations in Singapore. Lah. So basically, I hope to be a good citizen. Lah. I hope that I can pursue my study in psychology. So in future, I can be probably teenager, counsellor or counsellor to those people who are in need of help. Lah. I want to help these type of people is because I am one of them. So if I can change and turn good, I hope that I can be a useful contribution to the society. Today is my release day. You are not ready. As you remember, I was counting down the release days with my snack. So this is my last one. Basically, you don't have jasmine green tea and sugar crackers uh, here every day. So I choose this too. Sweet, I see. I think the last green tea I had was that uh, it should be two years ago. Forget the taste already. I really want to get up from here already. From 2 a.m. to now, I've just been waiting, waiting, and waiting. Um, no worries. Uh. Okay, uh, Rusty, stand by for your release. <laughs> Okay, uh, bravo. Can grab me 549er. 549er, you made for release. Okay, all right, pack your items. Oh, it's packed already. Lucky in your shirt first. Right. Carry everything up. Definitely, when they are released, we are happy for them. We don't want them to come back. We will make it a point to, to, to check in on them to make sure that the aftercare areas are being addressed. We will also remind them that once they are released, they need to cherish the time with their family and really make use of the time outside. Take care of your parents, very important. Most important thing, stay crime-free and don't come back here. Don't, don't waste your time. If you are very young, you think got a good future ahead of you. Remember that feeling? And this is the thing that, that will actually stop you from coming back. Then we will send him to the record office to do the processing for his release. We are now at the Kasubi reception area. Okay, this is the place where the inmates are processed for release. 25459. Okay, come. Uh, show me your wrist tag. There are a few stages where he needs to go through. So what? we will verify his identity. Then we serve the conditional remission order for him, if there is. Okay, uh, Rusli, today you are released on remission from today until 1st March 2023. You must not commit any offence. If you breach any of these conditions, you may be given an enhanced sentence by the court. Yes. Okay, you understand? You sign for me. On the first day of submission, his properties were sent over to ST Logistics. Once the image is released, property is turned back to him. One of the items that I'm looking forward to is my journal. I will always write down for the things that I have ideas upon.
Okay, just place the box on the floor. Okay, Rosli, I'm going to do a strip search on you. The purpose of the search is to prevent him from smuggling out items from inside to outside, for example, uh, messages. Then, okay. your wrist tag still okay? All right, you may put on your clothing. Basically, because we don't have underwear, we don't have long pants. The joy of getting the things back here, we feel like human again. Something that will make us not to come back here again. As I get nearer and near, nearer to the gate, I will eventually thinking about uh, happiness that is going to be happening to me. Uh. The feelings of being able to walk a long distance or getting back to see the sky and the sun, it make me uh, very, very emotional. Eh? Freedom means peace eh, for me. By me having the luxury to actually do whatever that I want, not to be CCTV all the time. For this sentencing, I take it as a life journey eh, where I eventually able to learn and make myself better so that I don't make any more mistakes in the future. After my first incarceration, I can still think that drug is not so addictive thinking that we have the choice to use it or not. So for this release, I need to tell myself that I cannot use it at all. You see, you are finally out. How are you feeling now? <laughs> yeah, happy of freedom. How are you guys doing? Good? Very hot. Huh? I'm looking forward to actually uh, to my mum uh, food. So eventually, uh, I think she can cook it today. Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. Okay, she's here already. Hi, mum. <laughs> Yeah, we go first, huh? Thanks, huh? Bye. I don't want to come back here anymore. And she was saying, Alima, this visit card, I do not want to have them anymore. She doesn't want to see me in prison. Mm -hmm. 